no, I did, it didn't drop. Well, or it's completely black here. Are, are you able to see anything? And now it's on again? Yep. Okay, the stream is back on. Well, uh, what I was saying before the stream dropped was that... Um, uh, yeah, because you you don't know what your opponent is bringing at the beginning of the battle, then it becomes a very rock paper scissors type of thing. Like you you kind of expect a typical Parthia build, and then you can counter that, and you can expect a typical Spartan build, and you can counter that. But you might get surprised as well, and just have no chance of winning at all. Yeah, I agree with you, one hundred. But I, I mean th that's um, it's in in a way it's a problem because then you basically see that okay I I just messed up the army selection here and I have absolutely no chance, but still it's kind of it's kind of a good uh, you you find that in other games as well like in um, for example if in okay Starcraft Starcraft is one of the most popular strategy games because I don't think uh, like Dota and League of Legends it I, I they, they're no, they're not strategy. Some people might say that Dota is strategy, but but it's not 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 on this scale, uh, and not on the scale of Starcraft. But I if you go for the wrong build order in Starcraft, you will get like you can lose the game to ten Zerglings if you if you break, pick the wrong build order, for example. So you kind of have the same thing there, but but the difference there is you have the ability to scout, so you have the ability to see what your opponent is doing and make an educated guess. It's called it's called stream cheating. <laughs> yeah. So I I always wanted to make a tournament. Like I like the guy made to host it, the room to win the tournament. The team just made the rules like four max and stuff like that. And yeah. Make the game more about adjusting to the rules and. Same here, you, you have to adjust to the rules set. And if the rules permit something that is OP, then you should be able to use it. If you want yeah, to I agree, I agree. Like, even if we make, make let's say, for example, if we play 2v2 tournament, it shouldn't have the same rules. Like, for 2v2 tournament, we should take only one elephant per army, just because we making the the battle less random. I tried uh, in duck mod to see if he balanced the elephants enough. I tried bringing four elephants as the Seleucids and <laughs> that was was one of the ugliest battles I have ever seen. <laughs> I just put, put I put elephants and shock cav on one flank and then just smashed the cav and smashed the infantry and that was the battle basically. Yeah. There was there was nothing my opponent could do about it because he didn't expect it. So if he expected it he could have just but both players were attackers of course, but if he expected that he could have boxed up and he could have survived. But that level of cheese, you can't really expect four elephants and the rest shock cav and some hillmen. <laughs> Absolutely. There, there are ways to prevent that, and you should like make the strict rule about the tournament for in the future. I think one of the reasons why that like that randomness, why people don't like that randomness, is because uh, a really good player, that is a better player, can lose if he brings the wrong type of build, and so the game isn't about that much about skill anymore. It's kind of a bit about gambling. Uh, and I don't think people like to not feel in control of what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't have the same army when it starts. So, 
Yeah. If you remember the type of element I'm I'm gonna host in the future with two builds, each player from one team makes the build for another player in other team, so they have to yep. change the stuff like that. I think people will like it, that time in the tournament system because it's, it's fun, it's fair for both teams and it kind of removes it kind of removes luck from the equation basically. Yep. And that might suck as well. Yeah. <laughs> because some playstyles won't work. Like if your opponent picks, okay, but then you could say, okay, so a player knows that I hate playing as Parthia, so he picks Parthia and he picks the <laughs> the most skirmish heavy build he can think of. And I'm just sitting there and look at all those pajamas guys just running around and trying to shoot their stuff at uh, whatever he brings. So so that that brings another element. But I think it's it, I think definitely it can be fun to try the mirror mirror matchup. Yeah, the, the problem is when he builds an army for you, and if he knows how to use it better, just because he's a better player, what this fact, and he's better overall yep. player in that respect. Because in the next battle, you will make an army for him, so he will have to adapt. If he wins, you'll have to get to He's the better player. Game over. Yep. Yeah. And that's the point. But still, yeah, I think some of the rules should be a bit stricter in this tournament. And we'll do that in the future. I think so too. It's just, it's just kind of difficult to find rules that everyone agrees on because people want to have rules that kind of reflect their playstyle. And there are good arguments for, for a lot of different rule sets, I think. Yeah, that's true. But, like, for most of the time, if you have some basic rules, like six max individuals, yeah. and max tag eight cab is with elephants, I think it's got balance between the top. Yeah. But when you, take, when you go with, them, like, infantry max, you really define one max better as others, just because they can bring 12 stronger and more Yeah, absolutely. Right? And then you have a problem. But with camping cap eight, I don't think that should be a problem ever. Because most of the players will never bring eight cap in it. Yeah. Uh, how many in Simon, when he beat your Parthian army, how many, um, how many cavalry did he have? He didn't have a whole lot. I think he had six cataphracts. Um, okay. They just raped everything. I had four, but he did better charges. Yeah. That's why I lost so badly. In the second, it shows like I adopted, I brought four spears because I expected to have heavy build. And you can, those 400 spears destroyed the cataphracts. Yeah. They were way more cost efficient than they were, so you can adopt, but the problem is you, you really need to find a way. It's hard to adopt the balance build. That's yeah, absolutely. And adopt to the entire if you bring, if you bring, uh, like, if you bring a balanced build, then you will probably lose to, uh, to an infantry rush. You will probably lose to a cavalry rush, and you might have problems against a skirmish rush. You could do fairly well against uh, another balanced build. Uh, but then again, if you go skirmish heavy and your opponent cav spams, then you have a problem. If you go infantry heavy and your opponent goes... So that's kind of the rock, paper, scissor, I think. If your opponent goes skirmish heavy and you go all infantry, then you have a problem. Yeah, I agree. In some points, you just have to, like, when you pick a pack and somebody else picks the other pack, you will, if you have a great knowledge of the game, you will be able to adopt the most situations yeah. that can happen. It's hard doing that with uh, Egypt and Solicity. They absolutely. Have yeah. The only problem. They have absolutely everything. Yep. You, you can't really predict what they're going to bring. You have to know the situation. Two seconds. I'm just going to have to get some food here. Whoop. There we go.
so they aren't ready yet. Is it now? They are up to us. Yep. Could do if they if they aren't. Yeah, the the painted ones aren't as good as the naked ones, and they aren't as good as the berserkers. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I really, really like Iceni. Just as a faction, it's one of the most balanced factions, I think. Yeah. Alright. No, they are ready. Yeah, so we will see Sparta against Iceni. Like normally this would be a very bad time for Sparta because Iceni can bring a sword heavy build and just demolish everything Sparta can bring. But I don't know how that plays out when Sparta can bring pikemen that have 180 men and they can turn off their formation attack. Because uh, Royal Spartans without formation attack, beasts. Yep. So the Peroikoi per hoplites or something like that. Periokoi. That could work. <laughs> I, I still I still like Iceni's chances here because they they have more options than Sparta has. Iceni knows what Sparta brings. Yeah. Because you didn't do anything with the chariots, like the mass of the chariots and stuff like that. Yeah. Whoa, look at this. If you think about it, now if you bring if they if you bring on a top like you know, they have hundred and eighty men and about four hundred and sixty, he needs to fill almost two full units of those to make that in this top. Yep. So he needs to target the the stronger units and take them out. Are are you? By the way, I just zoomed out, uh, so I'm below the map here. And then there's a water. Okay, so so look at this. <laughs> Where the hell am I now? I am in a kind of a, a sky that's under the map, or under the waves. <laughs> the water is moving. Yep. So it's being rendered. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's. Or well, now here it's not. Well. It's being rendered where there is uh, light, and it doesn't look like it's being rendered where there isn't light. So it's just the light being rendered. Yeah, maybe it's the light. Yeah. Or well, yeah, it looks like like oh well. <laughs> it's just it's, it's really weird to have water everywhere. So we're going back above ground and up in the sky. Let's see how far up in the sky we can go. Up in the yellow sky. Yay! No, th it will take a lot of time to go down, and the clouds are getting flat, and now we are going up above the clouds where no Rome 2 player has gone before, and wow, look at this. Whoa! It curves, it curves down, like a globe. This is far out, man. Far out. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I, let us see if I uh, okay. Just as they're starting the battle, which should be soon, I'm just going to go really fast down, but it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, really fast down. Here we go. No, why? No, that's the chat. Okay, sorry about this. <laughs> so insert that worked. That was pretty cool. Yay! So now I'm now I'm Royal Spartans. 
Hello. So, okay, now fuck, I'm back, uh, back in the <laughs> clouds after. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just. Okay, here we go. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, so players are saying something. He outspammed him. So let's see what he brought here. I think he just brought a fuck ton of swords and some. Yeah, so Druidic nobles, painted ones, painted ones, Druidic nobles. <laughs> it's just rare stuff. Druidic nobles, heroic nobles, heroic nobles. So six Druidic nobles, six painted ones, I guess, and some, f and and only two heroic nobles. And Iroclis has some. It's pretty interesting. And um, six pikes, of course, for Eurocles. And Heroes of Sparta uh, have two 120 men in that unit. And then he has some Peroikoi hoplites and Royal Spartans in the rear, with some Peroikoi peltasts as well. So, yeah, it looks pretty cool as well. And I think, I actually think he can do pretty well here. Uh, if he isn't surrounded and destroyed, oh yeah. Well, of course, when when units and chariots are being put at your back like this, um, I don't see what choice he has. He has to box in, and he has to turn on his. Yep, he turned on his phalanx. Goody goody. No, that was... I think he would have lost anyway, but it's just annoying to make that kind of mistake. Yeah. You don't ever know what can happen. Yep. Like the battle with Fatal and Panda, that was insane. That was stupid, was what that was. <laughs> it's, I called it like ten times and was wrong every time. Like, now Panda has it, now Fatal has it, now Panda has it. <laughs> it was just, what the hell is going on here? Somebody has it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody will win this battle, and then you get a desync. <laughs> okay, so Perokoi Peltas are going towards these Britain skirmishers, and they should be able to do quite well. They have a hundred range, they are firing, and the Britain tur skirmishers turned around, which was a bad idea, I think. Well, maybe not, they managed to get out of range. And over here, chariots at the rear, they should be able to wreck some things. Because, uh, Iroclis is creating a box, but he's, he's doing something quite smart here. He's putting hoplites in the front and pikes in the back, so these chariots won't be able to just smash through. They will smash through and then they will die. So that's that's pretty cool. But now the Britain skirmishers are moving up, and they but they are being uh, fired upon by these uh, Peroikoi peltasts. And now the hit points of the Spartan pikes will help them a lot. The Britain skirmishers are already wavering from being shot at by these two units of Peroikoi peltasts. They have a hundred range, so the Britain skirmishers are being demolished. Now here the Peroikoi hoplites are. He's just putting his druidic nobles standing there. They didn't kill a single hoplite, and the hoplites are standing, they are braced, but still they lost like 30, 40, well they lost quite a lot of men on the charge, and here come the chariots, just, but they stopped, so maybe the chariots, well no, he, well the chariots aren't able to, they're getting quite a few kills, but they won't be able to destroy the entire army. Yep, but still, they are, well, now they are wavering, so, uh, they are getting these Peroikoi Peltas down quite a bit, but now they're shattered, so, let's see if they get some kills running away as well. Okay, they are getting kills running away, so that's nice. But, so, uh, it looks like uh, Tigris is just pouring everything he has into this this part here, but the Royal Spartans are holding these uh, and Heroes of Sparta are holding away these Painted Ones, and the Painted Ones are dying uh, the Druidic Nobles are doing fairly well, and here comes the boom in the front Royal Spartans being charged, oh no, he just moved them he moved them into Phalanx, that was a pretty bad move, because he lost all his Bracing Bonuses there and Heroes of Sparta are 
doing not doing too bad against these heroic nobles actually. But still I well I won't I won't try to call it. I won't <laughs> So here some heroic riders are charging semi into pikes but they're able to get the through and charge two pike units in the rear and then just running through the heroic peltasts which is really nice of this one uh, one cavalry unit Yep But as you can see Spartan pikemen are being shot at by two uh, Britain skirmishers here I think, or is no, he's shooting at the peltasts actually, so that's why the pikes aren't dropping. Yeah. You're basically wasting one out of every two shots that you hit with, so. And, but these, uh, these heroic riders are still alive, but they only killed, uh, they only killed 70. And here come the chariots, straight through, friend and foe alike. Now we'll just watch the kills on them here, go up. Yeah, that's a GG for those um, skirmishers, I guess. <laughs> so, chariots. <laughs> but now the chariots managed to get one run and they managed to get 200 kills. If they aren't destroyed now. Yep, they are destroyed, so shattered. Painted ones and druidic nobles are dying. Royal Spartans are down to 38 men, but they still haven't broken. I would like to see a lot more chosen, chosen swords, and so it's it's a bit fragile. It's powerful, but it's fragile, so it won't do well in prolonged fights. Like these painted ones, are just look at them drop. They're just it looks like they're getting charged by elephants, but they are just fighting in a normal battle. But now Sparta lost their general, but Sparta doesn't care. <laughs> it would be cool if Sparta had like they get bonuses when the general died. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> all of the all of the units go into frenzy like in 300 because we need more of that. <laughs> they just threw off their armor and then ran towards uh, started getting some some. If they could get the like the attack animations from Shogun. From Shogun 2. <laughs> that would be pretty nice. <laughs> like they went into Shogun 2 mode, but it looks like uh, it. It looks like even though the, it's kind of weird because the battles now are are going on inside of the box, and Iceni is losing men really quickly. I think if Iceni had four of those uh, Yep. I see he needed uh, staying power and they needed more men basically. I don't think it's a good idea to bring painted ones against units that are this good defensively against units with high armor that are very heavy. Do you remember when we tested uh, the charges like how much bracing did against these units? It was just crazy. Yeah, heavy units can really good bracing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think the they are really good. Yeah. I think something like six six chosen swords would be pretty nice against Sparta. If there would be I would take I think I would take something like uh one noble or heroic unit and I would take Yep. Yep. I think so too. I think the chariots maybe were used uh, a bit prematurely. Maybe I don't know because when they attacked the peltas, they enabled uh, they, they stopped the peltas from firing, and that might have been very important against the painted ones and such. So, but I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. He was impatient. Like he saw that he was going to, he was going to box. So he could have just moved out of range of the peltests and shot at the pikemen and stuff. Exactly. And I think uh, I've, seen, I've seen the slingers can do a lot of damage. Yeah, I would have taken those instead of the Britain skirmishers because of the range. Yeah. Okay, so now Tigris is picking, uh, or Tigris of Gaul is picking, um, Tigris of Gaul, the player formerly known as Panda Warrior, is picking the Seleucids. And since he got a lot of flack for boxing up, he went for full on cav spam. So we'll see if he does that again. I doubt it, because Heraclius is also known for his uh, affinity for boxes. Oh yeah, but it worked against that Iceni build. That's the point. And Heraclius picks Parthia. Okay. We will see Heraclius play as Parthia. Interesting. Very interesting. He didn't even think that long about it either. He just went Parthia. And and just for just like as a side note, Parthia has lost every battle in this tournament against the Seleucids. That's really strange, yeah. I they have. They have <laughs> just gotten demolished. Every single battle. Yep. And I think the Seleucids also have won every single battle in this tournament. Really? Yep. I I won all my battles with the Seleucids. I have I lost against the Seleucids, and from the battles, all the other battles I saw and streamed, I think the Seleucids won. Uh, I th against Jesse James, I actually think I could have lost because I only had elephants and some uh, cavalry left. While he had a lot of pikes, but I I don't know if they chain routed or he quit. I'm not completely sure about that. I, I think that. Yeah, I agree. They they could take great one because they have to be side taking care of the elephants and But the thing is if if you pick a, a, a Sparta is a good counter pick, obviously, because uh, or it can be a good counter pick against nomads and Parthia and everything. But uh, no, well, not against everything, of course, but against some factions. But if you if you like if you pick if Tigris goes for the Seleucids and then let's say that uh, Heraclius goes uh, goes Sparta, um, then if if uh, if Tigris then just goes for a really sword heavy build, like he can have he can have uh, six Torax swords and he can have the royal peltas and stuff. I think it would just be uh, demolished. We haven't tested that, have we? <laughs> yeah, they are more expensive than elephants, so yeah. <laughs> but I don't know, I just think... Yeah, absolutely. But it's 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 hard. It's like it's hard to balance. It's really hard to balance these things. Yeah, but still, like, the special units, the speed fast, should be highly out of the wall. Like Sarius and Quantum, you need to kill a lot, or you need to kill the thing that will make the most trouble. Yeah. Absolutely. Now they are starting, and uh, <laughs> and Heraclius asked not to box too much. Oh my God. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> that actually happened. Oh Stop the internet. <laughs> 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 said ever. 
let it be known, Iracli Iraklis asked Panda Warrior to not... And you know what I think Panda Warrior did this time? Superman. No, I think Panda did exactly the same thing he did against me. Do you think so? Oh yeah. Well, actually, no. Well, yeah, yeah, I think he knows. I think he knows because the yellow is Iraklis. Uh No, you don't. <laughs> Iraklis thinks he has a huge advantage, and I think he's. But they can see the deployment, like if they deploy far away or something like that, so I'm I'm just yeah. going to Oh fuck. Okay, so just judging from the balance of power uh just judging by the balance of power Panda Warrior went full retard with a calf spam. Okay, Tigers of Gaul is ready again, so another sign that he has a spamming army. I bet he just dragged his entire army out in a single line, he's just going to click attack. Oh, this is going to be so bad. Okay, one player is ready and they are both ready. And what do you know? We have <laughs> Panda Warriors Epic Cavalry Spam. With I'm not even going to bother counting like the different components, but it's basically it's all cavalry, some camels, and some Indian war elephants. Okay, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one camel unit and two Indian armored elephants. Okay, yeah. And Iraklis has Eastern Spears and Parthian Swords and is going to die miserably. But he is moving out with his Horse Archers, won't help much, he will just destroy his center and then the Horse Archers will insta route, I think, if they aren't being caught already. Nope, they are running away quickly enough. So Tigris is, is doing, uh, uh, he's, he's not doing what I did, uh, he's spreading out in a fairly thin line. I don't know if that would work very well for him, because here comes the boom against the Eastern Spears when they are not stationary. But actually, the, the Eastern Spears didn't lose a lot of men on the charge, but that was against Asset Knights. And these Hellenic cataphracts from Tigris got charged by royal cataphracts and they are dead. Elephants are coming against the swords, that should mean dead swords pretty soon. Uh, overall I think Iraklis did uh, quite a few... quite... Uh, he did... He did. it was a kind of a smart thing to do what he did because spreading his units out like this means that they wouldn't... they won't insta route like my men did when they were, they were in a more narrow formation and now he won't be able to uh, now, Tigris won't be able to concentrate on a single part, he will have to spread out a lot more. So I really like that, but uh, still, he has not dealt with the elephants of uh, Tigris yet, and his line is starting to look thinner and thinner. But we'll see, Skirmisher is still alive. These Actually, I think so too, if he's able to just... He doesn't have them on heavy shot. Why don't you have them on heavy shot? Or does he? And now mercenary peltasts, but they are getting charged by these Hellenic cataphracts. So, but they are getting off a single volley against the elephants. Didn't help. Um, did some damage, but they just got charged by these Hellenic cataphracts, unfortunately for Heracles. Over here on this side, it's looking quite good for. Uh, he's able to hold off here, and um, so this this wide formation was actually perfect to stop this uh, this or 
to do better against this cavalry charge. He had more infantry as well, but but uh, this way he won't get surrounded at least. But still, there are a lot of elephants still alive on the field, and a lot of cataphracts, a lot of cavalry that is able to get off nice rear charges everywhere. On the left flank, um, Iraklis' war elephants are still alive, and he has skirmishers and some Parthian swords. But I think Iraklis. I think I, I'm not going to say anything. But <laughs> but I'm going to say this: he did a lot better than I did against this uh, this build. But he did he he brought fewer cataphracts, and that's the main difference, I think. And he didn't bring any. He didn't bring uh, all these skirmishers. He brought horse archers instead, which was a smart choice. Exactly. Those two. He expected uh, the the box. Yeah, absolutely. It was a it was a good it was a good pick. Um, and and he he used his like normally I would have thought that this the way he he spread out his army was was just he would be doomed because he only had a single line but he backed up that single line by elephants and by horse archers and mo more importantly by cavalry behind it so when now yeah pretty cool and he brought the balance he had swords yeah the, the problem here was basically that Tigris should have just concentrated on a single part of Heraclius' line and destroyed it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but, but now he just charged the entire army frontally with only cavalry, and that's that's unless you can unless you can surround, that's not going to work very well. But it was nice to see um, Parthia take on the Seleucids like that, although it isn't yeah. a very realistic Seleucid build. And it wasn't it wasn't even a Parthian build, <laughs> actually. But I really like how he played with that uh I I want to give him that. Yeah. And the build wasn't it wasn't that different from what I did. It only he just he just uh, used it like he, he put it he deployed it a lot differently and it, he deployed it if I had done the same thing I think it would have done, gone a lot better. Uh, if I had spread out my units like he did, but I only had two horse archers, so that was pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. And now Iraklis is taking Seleucids. So if Iraklis wins this, then he wins the tournament. And if Tigers wins this, we will have another battle on our hands. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of you're seeing people experimenting, but I think that's also because people are kind of afraid to experiment in um, important tournaments. So they they bring this safe builds. Yeah, it could, with a bit more balancing. Like, I think there are some units that are too cost-effective now. Like, like the Parthian Swordsmen, uh, they are just extremely cost-effective. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But I thought that uh, the shock cavalry would do a lot better against them from the front than they did. I, I don't really understand what happened. Like when the eastern spearmen got charged three men deep, and then they, uh, when they were moving, and the um, the Asset Knights, they just stopped by Eastern Spearmen. The Hoplites have bigger, I think they have, yeah, heavier units. Yeah. So they stopped 
But uh, the Eastern Spearmen also stopped uh, the Asset Knights fairly effectively. No, I thought they would just get run completely over, but what do you know? But I think really that um, Tigris didn't think this through. Like, he wanted to do what he did in the previous battle and just charge everything in. Uh, yep. I still favor the Egyptians because Egypt can bring those 180 men forward. Yeah. He can erase everything. He can bring better fighters. No one don't have the has with the or the elephant. Yeah, the armored elephants are just like like you saw in the battle with me and Tigris. If there is one good elephant unit left on the field, it can just turn the battle in a few seconds. Because that's that that yeah I I did I absolutely did but I thought that I, I would stop them with the first unit and then uh, the rest of the units could kind of just charge in and kill them because I sent like 500 spearmen and 500 swords at them yeah. but <laughs> but they just didn't care no. Yeah, I probably should have done that. Because overall, that battle was looking quite, uh, quite good, until it, <laughs> until it looked quite bad really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't have skirmished to begin with with those uh, javelins. I should have just kept them there. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Heraclius is ready, so I'm just going to go and get my the food that I put in the oven. Okay, I'm a bit behind schedule because I ate breakfast at 7 o'clock in the evening today after, well actually it was later than that, I ate breakfast at half past 8 because I had some stuff to do earlier today and then I forgot to eat and I went and trained without any food so now I'm quite hungry. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> ha. Oh, hello, ha. Yeah. And we didn't see... Well... Thus far, I haven't seen any like really retarded play from any players. Well, all 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 cavalry is pretty retarded, uh, <laughs> but it worked once and then it didn't work the other time. So it's kind of it's a gamble. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so now we are ready. It's going to be Seleucids against Egypt again.
It's a matchup we've seen a lot. But still, you don't know what to expect from them. They can bring everything. I agree. Yep. Okay, so a bit more even balance of power. That might indicate that we won't see any spams. <laughs> If Heraklis wins this, this will be the end of the tournament and Heraklis won. If Panda Warrior wins this, we will have a tiebreaker afterwards. Now, Tigris is ready already and so is Heraklis. So let's see here. We will have a battle of shield bearers. Person hoplites. We have five shield bearers. One unit of person hoplites. We have light peltasts. Four units of those. Then we have Hellenic artifacts for three units of those. Two elephants for the Seleucids. For Egypt, we have a front line of five pikes. Hellenic royal guard in the center. Egyptian javelins behind. Galatian swords behind that again. Then we have Nubian spears on the flanks and Ptolemaic cavalry on the flanks. So a massive, uh, or a slight cav advantage to be fair, to um, to uh, Eroclis. A skirmishing advantage to Eroclis, but Eroclis doesn't have pikes, whereas he only has, for infantry, he only has shield bearers. And I think these Galatian swords will do, do very well against uh, shield bearers. Let's see what kind of uh, armor penetration these collations have. Um, oh why can I only choose Selena Cataphracts? No idea. Okay. <coughs> I'll just assume they have four. So Eroclis is moving forward fairly aggressively here. Both players are. Now, uh, Eroclis has a bit more mobility because he doesn't have pikes. The Egyptian javelins are under fire from. And he only has light peltasts, actually. Pikemen coming forward. So he doesn't really have anything to deal with armored elephants effectively. These armored elephants could just smash the entire flank of, uh, of Tigris. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Yep. They are just shooting at the pike, no, at the shield bearers, and that's not really a cost effective way of using them. Yeah, that's probably the worst way. Yep. <laughs> so, the Egyptian javelins are dying quickly. And they are standing on top of pikemen, so the pikemen are also dying. This is probably the worst way you could use your skirmishers. <laughs> oh, did you see that? The Egyptian elephant has died in a single wall right there. Yep. Oh, that's actually worse. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, the hum humanity. Okay, so Egypt is wavering on this flank. Indian war elephants are just raping stuff. Um, the pikes aren't able to really engage effectively, and here comes the attack on the flank. The Indian armored elephants are just wrecking these Nubian spears. And here comes the Hellenic cataphracts, and they are absolutely wrecking the Nubian spears again. So the Nubian spears are double wrecked. The pikemen are just standing around, not really doing anything. Which is the problem with the pikes, of course. Now you can see... Uh, Egypt is losing on both flanks. Now they are sending in some cavalry to support here, but they are still fighting against shield bearers, which is not a good time for cavalry. And 
in this flank that we have African war elephants against Hellenic cataphracts and Indian armored elephants and now uh, Hellenic cataphracts are moving in again so Egypt is losing men fairly quickly here and now both flanks are lost for Egypt and Egypt is going to lose their general very quickly and these 45 morale pikemen aren't going to hold out for very long when their general is dead Yep. So Tigris is calling GG. Yep. GG. So we'll have to congratulate the Oculus on uh, winning this tournament. Yeah, he won one against the Panda Warrior three to one. He didn't. <laughs> this battle was he used an extremely uh, balanced build, I'd say. That's crazy. Oh, that's a nice one. Yep. Tigris got too sleepy. Well, I don't think he could have won with that build anyway. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was an interesting tournament, this. Goodbye.